Hey there everyone, on this Wednesday's edition of the Daily O, Mike Gundy and some of the players talked to us before their road trip to Waco this weekend. We'll talk about Miles Garrett's crash and a clash of brains and brawn. All that and more on the Daily O. Hi everyone and welcome to the Daily O. I'm Aaron Gonders. The OSU Cowboys are coming off a bye week with the defending Big 12 champion Baylor Bears in their sights. The Cowboys are on the road in Waco this weekend and Gundy, Gundy shared his thoughts on the Bears. Well, it's just two different philosophies. Um, I guess you could say a defensive head coach and an offensive head coach maybe. Um, they, uh, you know, they'll run the clock down and, and play with some tight ends and fullbacks and they're going to run the mid-zone play, and they're going to run uh, boots and nakers, n nakeds off of it, try to get the ball out of the flat, and they're going to max protect and throw it down the field. And we spread out more and uh, play at a much faster tempo. Um, you know, some of the things are, are similar, but for the most part, the philosophies and how we get there are different. Well, he's an issue. You're talking about 62? He's a problem. Uh, he should be playing on Sundays right now. So uh, we definitely have to know where he's at on the field because whenever he comes off the ball and goes straight that direction, he, whoever's in front of him is going that direction. Uh, so we have to be smart in how we handle him. But he's a good player. When you're dealing with a guy like that, you have to treat him like everybody else. You just have to have some concepts with your coaches to give to the players to help them at times. You don't want to single him up a lot. You want some help on him. And really, that's what we told him. I mean, we'll give you guys help sometimes, but sometimes you're going to have to hold your own. And he's going to make some plays. You're not going to stop him from making plays. But we need to make our share of plays against him. Well, it's a good matchup. Uh, again, I go back to what I said. They, they you know, they, st in my opinion, they stay in their box on what they're trying to get accomplished on offense. And they have good players. They've, uh, uh, Baylor's always had good players. You know, they're sitting right in the middle of, 300 Division One offers a year within a four-hour drive. It's a, it's a good location to get good players. And they've developed them, and they, they know what they want to get accomplished. And so um, one thing to watch is the matchup between those two groups that you just mentioned, because they're both pretty good groups, and, and uh, it should be interesting to watch and see how it plays out throughout the game. I, I think there's more of the analytics that Coaches are looking at, they're getting percentages on uh, certain specific situations in games. And um, right or wrong, they're buying into this, that formula that is being presented to those coaches at that time. I, I don't know that to be true. I, I think that's where most of this has started. And then there's a, um, a side of it's based on your who you are as an offense. And, uh, and then, in my opinion, is who you're competing against. So, I mean, this is probably an exaggeration, but if it was fourth and two, and I was going against a front like Georgia, I wouldn't really be fired up about going for it. We also went and talked to the players to find out what they think about the game on Baylor against Baylor on Saturday. I mean, ever since, you know, off season, uh, he, he's, he's always focused, he's locked in. Um, you know, you can just tell that it, it matters to him. You know, he, I mean, like everybody else, we you know we want to win, and um, I think that he's done a really good job just taking the reins and um, his mentality is I think fed off to everybody else. We use it to feel us for sure. Uh, they uh, they are hard opponent. They come out and play us hard every single game. And, uh, our main thing is our offensive line we need to play hard, even defensive line need to play hard, and uh, running backs need to play physical. Just you know start the game, set the tone. He's running hard, pretty much. What do you mean with him? Oh, he's physical, man. Um, he's he's very powerful. I mean, he gets in the backfield a lot. So uh, us for a running back, we need, we need to see that earlier so we can make our moves in the backfield if that happens. But I'm pretty sure our, line, our linemen will hand it up, hand, handle that pretty well. We've been working hard this week. Um, I think we're ready to go. How do you see he's Oh, yeah, he's a monster, man. Um, <laughs> no, he's like the... I don't know what I can think about who's going to play physical like that, man. Uh, he's not scared of contact. It seems like he doesn't get tired until, like, the, you know, the fourth quarter. So we need to be a fast-tempo team to uh, be able to tire him, you know, and uh, just keep him on, on his toes. I mean, we 
just got to stick to our, our, you know, what we do. We can't really, you know, every team in the Big 12 is kind of different. You know, typically a lot of them like to go fast. Uh, but uh, Baylor, you know, they're a little slower for Big 12's tempos. And But, you know, we just got to stay with what we do and not let their tempo affect our tempo. We got to gotta take over the game. Yeah, I mean, they, they'd not be very smart to not to. I mean, anything that they've seen that has been successful against us uh, this year so far, if they don't try to you know mimic those things, then they, I would say they're not very good coaches. But they are good coaches, so we kind of know that that's what they're going to do. And, you know, we've put in our corrections over the weeks and you know, try to put in some new wrinkles and stuff like that. So, uh, I mean, I try not to be motivated by, like, Things that happened last year, or like ex, you know, out of my control. Uh, you know, I played in that game last year, and you know, obviously I had a little bit of control over it, but uh, but I can't really dwell on it. I tried not to dwell on it. You know, like I've said many times before, it's kind of just come up as a top conversation over the last few months, and you know, I try not to let you know a single event. Uh, motivate me to play my best you know I try to self-motivate you know think about the reason why I play football as my motivator you know my family my son and all that stuff so uh, girlfriend so those are the things that motivate me not negative or positive things that happen in the past. Saturday will be at 2 30 in Waco that's kickoff. And that was a lot of Cowboy football to start the show, but don't go anywhere. Coming up after the break, we'll see how Hurricane Ian is affecting college football schedules. Cowgirl soccer is back in Stillwater for their first conference matchup. And that, we'll be right back. I'm Kristen Hawkins. I went to Oklahoma State University here in Stillwater in 99 to 2004. I've always felt like Stillwater needed more family-friendly things to do, and we have opened up AR Workshop. We do everything from knitting blankets that can be done in a three hour class. And we create doormats and porch signs. The Christmas wreaths with our yarn that we use for the blankets. We also do, um, we just started a new project for gnomes and we've done pumpkins during the fall. But our big thing that we do here are interior signs. Our designs are extremely unique to AR Workshop. Customers come in, it's everything is here for them to do. They create everything. They can be as hands-on as they want. They came in here to relax and have fun and that they are proud of their project that they've made. Pecans are staple to Oklahoma. In fact, many of our native pecans come from trees that are older than Oklahoma statehood. My father's the one that got us started into the pecan picking. I was probably 10 or 12 years old and we started off with the one little mechanical picker that you pulled behind a four-wheeler. Then we'd go home at night and we'd clean them on a TV tray. I guess uh, watching my dad work hard when we were young and people started trusting him and getting more and more groves, uh, we just kept growing. Being a, a relatively new and fresh company, we get to sit in the same room with people who have been a part of the Oklahoma economy for decades. It's opened a lot of doors. It's gave us uh, quite a bit of exposure, and I think people, you know, will take a small company like us a little more serious. We're just going to continue growing as long as our community lets us and uh, our customers keep on buying, and we'll see where it takes us. <laughs> We would design something, it would sit on the counter, and people was either, if enough of them said, it, you know, this just is, this isn't it, it never made to the line. Dad was excited that they're all original, they were all designed on mom's kitchen table, and it gets in your blood after a while. We're very happy that Pamela and Michael have taken over the business and kept the family going. We took the business over in 2017. When we found that it was available, we wanted to keep the legacy of family alive, but it was also incredible products that deserve to be uh, a part of Made in Oklahoma's story. We were a part of Made in Oklahoma years ago, and so it kind of grew as Made in Oklahoma grew. Oklahoma is ingrained into our, everything that we did. We've been here most of our life. That's what we entailed our whole business on, was the Oklahoma homegrown feeling. 
Welcome back to the Dailyo. Let's get into the national headlines. It's hurricane season and just like last year, some games are having to move to locations or to different days. UCF's game versus SMU will be played on Sunday at 1 Eastern time. Eastern Washington versus the Florida Gators will be moved to Sunday at noon Eastern. South Florida's game against East Carolina is getting moved from Tampa Bay to Boca Raton, which is FAU's stadium. And South Carolina versus South Carolina State is getting moved up to Thursday at 7 p.m. Next, a sad day for the families of five high school football players in Philadelphia. Roxborough High School football team just finished a scrimmage when a shooter opened fire over, over the course of the ambush. 64 shots were fired, four different weapons. One of the five players shot, uh, four were wounded, and one died. We come back to Stillwater for more OSU sports. Cowgirl Soccer is back in town for their conference home opener against the Texas Tech Red Raiders. The Red Raiders come to town sporting a record of 4-3-4 and four with, lot, with a loss and a tie to open Big 12 play. For the Cowgirls, this game is all about maintaining momentum into conference play. In their first weekend matchups in conference, the Cowgirls beat the Kansas Jayhawks 2-0 and the Kansas State Wildcats 1-0. They come home with an overall record of 9-1-1 and 2-0 and in conference play. A league best. Kickoff will be at 7 p.m. tomorrow night. Now, we have some news from Gallagher-Riba as Mike Boynton met with the media team about the upcoming basketball season. Depth is, um, depth is, a, is, a, is certainly a, uh, an asset for us, you know, but the experience of depth, like guys who have been successful in college basketball already. I mean, John Michael Wright averaged 18 points a game for three years. You know, he didn't just jump up and, you know, and decide he wanted to play here. He's proven that he could compete at a high level. Caleb Asbury was a... 40% three-point shooter, you know, in each of the last stops he's made, Texas State Ranger College, playing for some really good coaches, and himself averaging 13 points a game in, in a conference that's pretty good. So, you know, you feel good you got guys who've done it outside of your program, and then there's some guys who haven't quite done it here that we believe, you know, we brought them here. We, we believe they can. Chris Harris has been hurt essentially for his whole time here. Yeah. Um, Woody Newton didn't never really get comfortable last year. He's had a, he's had a really good summer, and then you know Keon, Keon may be you know maybe a guy who figures out a way to get on the court early. Uh, even though he's the only freshman we have, he's got a super high competitive uh, motor. Uh, he can play multiple positions and guard multiple guys. And, and then you got your mainstays and, and Avery and Bryce and, and and guys like that. So I feel good that that'll that'll drive. Um, some fight for minutes early uh, and give us a chance to, to really see you know, how deep we can be. What kind of addition is John Michael? What, is, what have you seen from him? I know you, you were looking for a point guard. Yeah. Is that what he answers there? Is that, is that yeah, I mean, probably, um, probably more than I thought in terms of his feel for the game. The hardest part about recruiting through the portal is you don't really get to know them as people. And it's, the, you know, it's the thing we always took a lot of pride in throughout the recruiting process and recruiting guys early and getting on them and getting to know as much as you could about them. Um, and so you're always a little bit leery about, you know, are there things that you didn't uncover that, that may show up? And he's been better than, you know, I'd hoped. Is Caleb Boone natural at the four? How's he kind of adjusting to that? Um, he's got, he's actually got some natural shooting touch, a natural shooting touch there. Sometimes the ball handling, you know, escapes him. <laughs> uh, so we try not to put him in too many positions where he has to make plays with the ball on the floor on the perimeter. Uh, but he's really good in screens. Uh, he's actually a better rebounder offensively from there. He's not battling as many bodies. Uh, and so that, that's been a, a positive kind of a, I don't know if surprise, I kind of knew it was possible, but just seeing him embrace that um, has been really good. Uh, and, and the other thing is, him and Musa learning how to pass to one another, you know, which is a little bit different for them because they didn't play that, that much together last year. It's time to take a break, but when we come back, we'll take a deep dive into some NFL injury news. We'll also have a preview for the Thursday night game. Don't go anywhere. Well, how I got started was my daughter said, Mama, why don't we rent a booth at the Quarter Horse Show? And it was very, very good because, you know, when you're giving your jelly away for free, 
people really do love it. <laughs> but when you ask them to pay for it, then that's a true test. What makes my product so unique is the Scotch bonnet pepper. And the Scotch bonnet is the Jamaican pepper. And I had lived in Montego Bay, Jamaica for four years. So I learned how to handle the pepper and how to cook with it. I always say, you don't do this on your own. I mean, you have so many people that help you along the way. For me and for many of us, that's my name on that jar. And it better be good. I'm Kristen Hawkins. I went to Oklahoma State University here in Stillwater in 99 to 2004. I've always felt like Stillwater needed more family-friendly things to do and we have opened up AR Workshop. We do everything from knitting blankets that can be done in a three-hour class and we create doormats and porch signs. The Christmas wreaths with our yarn that we use for the blankets. We also do, um, we just started a new project for gnomes and we've done pumpkins during the fall. But our big thing that we do here are interior signs. Our designs are extremely unique to AR Workshop. Customers come in, it's everything is here for them to do. They create everything. They can be as hands-on as they want. They came in here to relax and have fun and that they are proud of their project that they've made. Our state is one of the most beautiful and unique states in the USA. With diverse geographies, the historic Route 66, unforgettable restaurants, and some of the greatest people on the planet. With so much to see and so much to do, living in Oklahoma means one of the best vacation spots is right in our own backyard. Doesn't this story need to be told? As filmmakers and photographers based right here in Oklahoma, we thought so. And hey, who doesn't like a good road trip? So, we packed up our cameras, teamed up with Lieutenant Governor Matt Pinnell and the Oklahoma Tourism and Recreation Department, and that's how this series was born. We want to show you why traveling within the great state of Oklahoma is a great idea. So come join us for thousands of miles over the next year, from Broken Bow to Black Mesa. This is the Oklahoma Road Trip. Welcome back to The Daily O. We're going to get into some NFL news. Miles Garrett cleared concussion protocol after his grisly car crash on Monday. Garrett made national headlines when he crashed his Porsche in Wadsworth, Ohio. Garrett was leaving the Browns practice facility in Berea, Ohio, according to the Ohio State Highway Patrol. The car was totaled, and Garrett suffered minor lacerations along with some minor bruises. He had a female in the car with him, who luckily was not critically injured either. Garrett is not ruled out, according to head coach Kevin Stefanski, for the Browns game against the Atlanta Falcons this Sunday. Zach Wilson is also medically cleared to make his season debut against uh, the Pittsburgh Steelers this Sunday. Wilson suffered a knee injury in the, in the Jets' first preseason game against the Eagles. Wilson is expected to start, according to his head coach Robert Sale, if everything goes over well the rest of the week. Now, we'll preview your Thursday night football game. Possibly the surprise of the season so far, the Miami Dolphins are hosting the Super Bowl runners-up, the Cincinnati Bengals. The Miami Dolphins are 3-0 on the season and on the shoulders of stellar play from quarterback Tua Tungavailoa. The Bengals have struggled to recapture that magic from last season that got them to the Super Bowl. They sit at the middle of the pack offensively in total yards, but they're the top 10 in the league defensively so far. The Bengals are favored by four points. The game kicks off at 7:15 and streams live on Amazon Prime. It's time for another quick break, but when we come back, a combat sport while playing chess and a nostalgic day in this sports in sports history. We'll be right back on the Daily O. We would design something. It was set on the counter, and people was either if enough of them said it, you know, this just is, this isn't it. It never made to the line. Dad was excited that they're all original. They were all designed on Mom's kitchen table, and it gets in your blood after a while. We're very happy that Pamela and Michael have taken over the business and kept the family going. 
We took the business over in 2017. When we found that it was available, we wanted to keep the legacy of family alive, but it was also incredible products that deserve to be uh, a part of Made in Oklahoma's story. We were a part of Made in Oklahoma years ago, and so it kind of grew as Made in Oklahoma grew. Oklahoma is ingrained into our everything that we did. We've been here most of our life. That's what we entailed our whole business on was the Oklahoma homegrown feeling. Pecans are staple to Oklahoma. In fact, many of our native pecans come from trees that are older than Oklahoma statehood. My father's the one that got us started into the pecan picking. I was probably 10 or 12 years old, and we started off with the one little mechanical picker that you pulled behind a four-wheeler. Then we'd go home at night and we'd clean them on a TV tray. I guess uh, watching my dad work hard when we were young, and people started trusting him and getting more and more groves, uh, we just kept growing. Being a, a relatively new and fresh company, we get to sit in the same room with people who have been a part of the Oklahoma economy for decades. It's opened a lot of doors. It's gave us uh, quite a bit of exposure, and I think people, you know, will take a small company like us a little more serious. We're just going to continue growing as long as our community lets us and uh, our customers keep on buying, and we'll see where it takes us. <laughs> Hi, I'm Shauna here at Where the Buffalo Roam in beautiful downtown Pawnee, Oklahoma. We have a lot of beautiful and unique items for sale in the store, but our number one items are Navajo jewelry, Pendleton blankets, and Consuela. It's a great place to shop, a beautiful downtown, so come see us in Pawnee, Oklahoma. Welcome back to the Daily O, everyone. It's time for this day in sports history. We'll take you back to 1985 for some OSU football today. All those years ago on the Cowboys, they took on the University of Miami, Ohio Red Hawks in a 45-10 beatdown that season. The Cowboys went 8-4 with a ranking as high as 5th in the nation. Cowboys star Thurman Thomas was in his second season, which was statistically one of his greatest. Thomas ran for over 1,600 yards and scored 15 touchdowns on the ground. He could catch the rock too, though, putting up 145 yards with one touchdown. Next, we have to put, our, put on our party hats and cue the confetti because we have a couple of athlete birthdays today. First we have Tennis Hall of Famer and golfer Ellsworth Vines. Vines was most well known for his ability on the tennis court. He won the U.S. Open back-to-back -back years and almost won Wimbledon in back-to-back -back years, falling short to Jack Crawford in that second attempt. Vines never had any huge golf wins, but he did make it to the semifinals in the U.S. Open when they still did match play in 1951. Jack Fournier is our next birthday, and Fournier played in the MLB from 1912 to 1927. He was most well known for his incredible batting, but subpar fielding. By the end of his career, Fournier ended with a 313 batting average and 136 home runs. Now we'll get into my new favorite segment, even though this is my first time doing it. Our strange sport for today's show is chess boxing. Yes, you heard that right. I said chess boxing. The sport was invented in 2003 with most of its popularity in England, Russia, and India. As the name implies, Chess boxing combines the intelligence and challenge of speed chess and the physical toll of boxing. The way the sport works is that there are 11 total rounds that alternate between playing chess and boxing. Someone wins by either knocking out their opponent in the ring or by checkmate. If neither competitor wins in regulation, there will be an additional round of boxing to decide whether the winner of if to decide the winner. If neither competitor sealed a win in the extra period, the winner will be decided by the boxing score. And now a quick recap of your national headlines. 
Hurricane Ian is affecting four college football games this week. UCF and SMU will be played on Sunday at 1 Eastern. South Florida and East Carolina are moving their game to Boca Raton. South Carolina and South Carolina State will play on Thursday night. And Eastern Washington will be at Florida. Uh, and they will play that game at noon on Sunday. Five-star defensive lineman David Hicks committed to Texas A&M today over the Oklahoma Sooners and the Alabama Crimson Tide. Hicks said that he has good relationships with everyone on the Aggies staff and he can stay close to home, and that is why he chose A&M. Lastly, there was a shooting in Philadelphia after a high school football scrimmage. Five Roxborough players were shot, four were wounded, and one passed away. That is going to do it for today's episode of The Daily O. Make sure to tune in tomorrow. Emma Lightfoot will have you covered for all the OSU and national headlines you need. For The Daily O, I'm Aaron Gonders. Thanks for watching. hopes are when folks drink our water is that they'll drink it for a few days and find out the difference. They'll start feeling better because there's been no chemical in our water. There's a list of good things that we have. We don't have any bad things in it. I see the future of divine water as being worldwide, which will bring outside dollars into the state. It means a lot to me because I started it, I guess, and our family started it. My name is James Remedy. Fired Up Stilly is the name of the business, and I'm one of the owners. We all three met, the three owners, working as employees at a similar place like this. What I hope for is for everybody to feel welcome, like family. Not only do I want students to feel welcome to come here and study and use our free Wi-Fi, but also I want adults and families to be able to come in. We've built a connection with a lot of people and you know, Stillwater's a big community, so we just want to invite everybody to be able to eventually make their way through our doors. Well, definitely the T's, I would say. Most people fall in love with them. They just got a great amount of energy, gets you going through your day, and it just kickstarts you to get you know, everything you need to done. For myself, it would just have to be you know, being the owner, owning something that you know, is able to impact other people's lives. And you know, the way we can affect our community is something that I really have always wanted to do. We love our clients and our customers that come through every day, and we enjoy getting to know them. My name is Kayla. I've been here since the beginning, so four years. Scratch is more focused on farm and mostly made in Oklahoma products, keeping it local. Sustainability is our biggest thing. Um, that's one of the reasons why this place opened. I've been the chef here at Scratch for two and a half years. I uh, started here as a line cook. Our food and drinks are a bit separate entities almost inside the restaurant. So the food is now up to 85% of the uh, products we bring in are raised or grown locally. Uh, it's all based off the things that I grew up eating in southern Oklahoma, the things my grandparents ate. I'm not, uh, fresh food, clean food, um, organic food, sustainability, that's all of our thing. From front of house to back of house, we're able to maintain both with freshness. But made in Oklahoma means we get it straight from the farms that are 20, 30 minutes another little county away. We get it straight from them.